Yo, yo, gamers, Nature here. Today, we're going to go over Hunter Pets for WoW Season of Discovery for Phase 2. Now, it's important to note, we don't know what changes will come into Phase 2 and everything is subject to change. However, with that being said, this is meant to be a community discussion and there's definitely some things we would want to notate going into Phase 2. I'm sure there's something I could miss, so let's add any additional feedback in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps. For starters, let's touch base on the most recent nerf that Hunters received. This nerf dropped Hunter pet damage with Beast Mastery Rune by roughly about 25-28% to 28 pet damage. Since it reduced the Beast Mastery Rune from 30% damage increase to 20% damage increase while also changing the focus regen from 80% to 50%. Now this nerf did come with a small buff to Chimera Shot which only added about 1-2% to 2 damage to our overall attacks, assuming you're even running it. And it also reduced the mana cost of a couple of the abilities. We don't know, need to go into a lot of detail about the nerf, but what we do need to know going into Phase 2 with regards to pets is Beast Mastery Hunters basically mitigate the nerf altogether. Although it's way too early to tell if Beast Mastery would be the best option for next phase, we know it should be strong option because of pet scaling. With Beast Mastery Hunters, here's what we need to know for next phase. You'll gain two talents that basically mitigate the nerfs we just saw. We'll gain Bestial Discipline, which increases the focus regen by 20%. Now, when you take the original 80% increase pre-nerf and compare it to 50% increase plus 20%, of that 150%, we actually get the same exact number. This is very important to know, especially for pets like Wind Serpent, who is dependent on the 50 focus every tick to be able to use their ability. In addition to that, we will gain Bestial Wrath, which provides a 50% increase in damage for 18 seconds on a 2-minute CD. This lines up to exactly 7.5% average increase over the 2-minute period. Now, you'll be able to do things to min-max this ability for sure, and not every fight will be two minutes. For example, on a one minute fight, this equals 15% damage increase. My point here is really this would replace the 10% damage loss we received from the nerf and puts pets in a weird position where they'll scale really well in phase two. Especially since we'll have other talents like Ferocity and Frenzy added into the mix and more potential Beast Mastery related runes or abilities added to the game. Now, none of this is guaranteed, of course. It's just worth going over. We're having a pet-oriented conversation since Beast Mastery is really focused on that. The first pet I really want to highlight going into Phase 2 is Gorillas. Yeah, Harambe awareness is here, and it could be insane. We know from Phase 1 that magic abilities such as Scorpid Poison and Wind Serpent Lightning Breath were basically broken. We can grab a Gorilla as early as level 32 in STV, and grab Thunderstomp rank 1 and upgrade at level 40 in STV for Thunderstomp rank 2. Now, the big downside to Thunderstomp is it is a one minute CD. However, there's no indication from Blizzard that the nerfs applied to other magic abilities have been made to Thunderstomp. So, we're basically going into a world where you take Thunderstomp. Multiply it by 102% because gorillas have a 102% multiplier. Multiply that by pet scaling. Multiply that by 20% for Unleashed Fury. Multiply that by 20% for the Beast Mastery Rune. Again, multiply by 60% for Kill Command, which will be up every single use of Thunderstomp. And then multiply it by 50% for Bestial Wrath, which would be up every other use. Now listen, I'm not a mathematician, but Wind Serpents were hitting for 500 damage with a level 25 pet scaling as a single target ability, and Thunderstop is an 8 yard AoE ability that will start off as double the damage of the original Wind Serpent since it's 87 to 99. Looking at this, and I'm thinking it's potentially a, a thousand, maybe more ability that's a flipping AoE. It's going to be crazy. In reality, again, I have no idea. But yeah, as hunters, we should look out for this and test it in phase two for sure. Next pet we'll cover is Wind Serpent. 
just because we went over it talking about Harambe, Wind Serpents in reality will gain their old focus regen of 50 focus per five seconds. And that means they can use two lightning breaths on their opener, then another lightning breath every five seconds like before. The positive is multipliers really benefit Wind Serpents and you will have level 40 pet scaling. However, on the flip side, Although you can teach a level 36 Wind Serpent Lightning Breath rank 4, we actually cannot train that pet until level 41, meaning we're stuck with rank 3, at the, which is the same rank as phase 1. While we're on the topic of Wind Serpents, let's touch base on Dash and Dive. Movement speed abilities are very good in Classic WoW for both PvE and PvP. Having uptime is super important. A pet that can get in and begin damage is much better than doing zero damage while slow walking up to your target. These won't stack with Bestial Swiftness, which is a 30% movement speed talent increase that is outdoors only. However, Dash provides 60% movement speed for 15 seconds at rank 2 and can be used indoors or in dungeons. And it can be learned by cat, hyena, wolf, or boar. While Dive provides only 40% movement speed for 15 seconds at rank 1 and can be learned by any carrion bird, owl, bat, or wind serpent. It's important to note that dive rank 2 can't be learned until level 41 because there's no pet available at level 40 with the ability. Let's ta- chat next about scorpions. From the past, we know scorpions were best in slot for the beginning of phase 1. It's worth notating they had three big nerfs. Number 1, Blizzard removed kill command from working with lightning breath and scorpion poison. Number 2, they flat out reduced the damage of magic abilities. Number three, the final nail in the coffin is they spread the poison damage out between all five stacks where previously it would be applying all the multiplier damage on the first stack, which was like 99% of the damage. What we want to know going into phase two is we'll jump from Scorpid Poison rank one to rank three which as a base level does about three times the amount of damage. We'll add Bestial Wrath, which is a 50% multiplier as well as level 40 pet scaling like the other pets. But most importantly, we have no clue what the Nomergon boss fights will look like. One of the main reasons Scorpion Poison died is because it takes 20 seconds to apply all five stacks of poison. And realistically, most boss fights in BFD are way too quick to make that effective. Now, it is worth noting that some of the fights in Trash and Nomergon are mechanical or elemental, so poisons won't work on those targets. But if there is a really long fight that ends up occurring in Nomergon for something that's not mechanical or elemental, you may see Scorpids pull ahead on that encounter. Fair warning, yes, that's a reach for sure, but it's worth discussing and keeping an eye out for. I always get a lot of questions from classic players who are play, playing Season of Discovery when it comes to the Owl. It's obviously too early to say for sure, but my guess is Owls won't make a comeback in Phase 2, and there's two main reasons for it. Number one, pet scaling is just way too strong. The reason we used Owls in the past is pet ability damage really was too small that it didn't matter at all in Classic WoW well what ability you used. Owls had a 107% damage multiplier, which is only beat by cap, cats and raptors at 110%, so they were super close in damage. Number two, we're stuck with rank two Screech in phase two, which means we have a level 24 scaled version of the ability where most pets have a level 36 to 40 scaled version. It only does 12 to 16 base damage. With that being said, in Classic WoW, it's very important to understand that boss damage is calculated in a certain way. They take boss-based stats, then multiply it by armor and weapon equipped on the boss, then multiply it again by the ability used. Since Screech affects the base stats, it's known for mitigating about 7% of melee damage on a boss encounter, which far outweighs the original damage that it did in Classic WoW 4 abilities. But again, we're stuck with rank 2 at this stage, 
and that just makes it way less viable here in phase two. You may see it come back a little bit later, but in reality, our pets are doing way more damage and having pet abilities that do more damage is typically going to be king unless if you really need the damage mitigation now for my favorite pet in class in classic wow let's talk about cats unlike phase one where cats and raptors were basically equals cats will pull ahead out of the gate in phase two just because they can learn dash which raptors can't there isn't really anything special to report on cats besides them gaining dash You'll get an updated Claw and Bite, both rank 6, which are both going to be very strong for next phase. It's, Im it's important to note, too, that cats have a 110% multiplier in damage, which is higher than any other pet type besides tied with raptors. And there's no reason they shouldn't be strong choice for next phase. When it comes to cats, it's great to stop here and talk about attack speed for your pet. What you need to know is two things. A slower attack speed benefits more with abilities affected by base damage output of your pet. As of now, only ability that does that is flanking strike. Unlike something like kill command, which only works on ability damage, which is static, flanking strike causes your pet to do another auto attack. And the slower the pet attack, the more that it will hit for. Number two, starting phase two, beast mastery hunters will have access to super strong talent called frenzy. This gives your pet a 20% chance per talent point, making it 100% at 5 talents to gain a 30% haste buff for 8 seconds after a crit. That's pretty big. When it comes to this ability, having a fast pet can be beneficial. For example, a 1.0 or 1.2 attack speed pet theoretically only needs a 3 out of 5 talents for a full uptime on the ability. It's important to note here that comment I just made is based off of what I know from Classic WoW. If pet scaling increases crit percentage of your pet, which has not been confirmed or denied yet in Season of Discovery, this could mean that you can use less than the three talent points. Big assumption, if cats with fast attack speeds end up being bis, you'll want to look out for Broken Tooth. This is a huge classic favorite in PvP and PvE since it has a remarkable 1.0 attack speed as a cat and is the only pet until level 60, which is a ZG bat that has that 1.0 attack speed. That's a level 37 rare in the Badlands and is on an 8 hour timer. This will be a hard pickup to get, but will be strong if that's viable for next phase. That's all I wanted to touch base on for each pet type going into phase two. Real quick, here's all the new looks added for phase two. For carrion birds, we have the blue vulture. For cats, we'll now have the black cat, the brown and tan cat. This is a level 35 rare found in Altrak Mountains and is unique look only for this cat. For gorillas, we'll have black, dark gray, and gray will be available. For hyenas, we'll gain gray and red. Now, I've also been a personal fan of the unique looks of Scorpion. Phase 2 will unlock pink, red, white, and yellow. For spiders, we'll have jungle and red. Side note, red is a unique look assigned only to a rare spawn called Naraxis in Duskwood. On turtles, we'll unlock gray, orange, and white. Now, technically... You used to be able to tame Gamera as the orange. I don't know if you could this phase. I never tried it. Um, but next phase will definitely unlock that look for sure. And finally on Wolf, we unlock Red, which for this phase is only found on Barnabas, a level 38 rare in the Badlands. Now that we have all these things out of the way, I want to speculate a little bit here. We know in phase one that Blizzard added Winvern or Wyvern as a tameable pet. If you didn't know, they gave Wyverns the exact same ability as Wind Serpents, making them pretty much parallel to Wind Serpents, which ended up being very strong in Phase 1. I really have no clue, but my hunch here is they add a quest to create or tame some type of mechanical pet. Since Phase 2, 
the theme here will be centered around Nomergon and STV. I couldn't really think of an animal that's not already tameable in STV, while Nomergon has some viable options. They already have mechanical spiders, mechanostriders, and gorillas in retail WoW. And as a side note here, they are tameable pets in that version. So I'd assume it would be a hard thing or not a hard thing for them to implement in classic WoW. Now, my hunch here would be one of the three. However, they could add something where you can tame all of them. Who who knows, really? Now, again, that's just a quick thought on it. I could be wrong. And if they if you have something else that you think fits better for the face, go ahead and throw it up in the comments. And with that being said, that's all I have for today. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.